mentioned this in the class before or the group before that I think it's over 60% of people don't know what a good relationship really is. Mm. Um, and that that's very startling, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but when you really think about it, some of us, whether or not we had a great relationship or not, we've had examples and seen what great relationships look like. But the more and more we get removed from that or people remove themselves from other folk who um, could show what a, a great relationship is, the more people don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's so important to get like wise counsel and sit up under people who know and those who are cheering you on and, you know, people who have seen it and even whether you've made mistakes or not, you know, it's like some people uh, who may be alcoholics or whatever. And I remember um, in the North, you, you would see more, you know, um, in certain neighborhoods, you would see more liquor stores or whatever around. But you have alcoholics saying, don't do what I did, you know, because they know the better way, mm -hmm. the better way to live life. And they would give great advice. But now as time is going on, sometimes we can't even find people who will even give that advice. So I we're going to start talking about, um, you know, signs of a toxic relationship. And I'm going to move this little thing over here a little bit, move it down for, for, for a few moments. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the first sign is you don't feel comfortable being yourself with them, whoever you're, you're connected with. And for those, it could be right. We're talking about a romantic relationship right now, but somebody may be watching on another platform and maybe it's a, uh, it's a family relationship or it's um, friendships or whatever. It works with any relationship. If it's toxic, you do not want to be in a toxic relationship. And the, the, some of the signs I'm going to discuss are not all of the signs, but these are some good ones to start with. Mm -hmm. So if you don't feel comfortable being with your, being yourself, that means you have to be somebody else. Mm. And eventually it's going to be miserable. It may start out feeling okay, but eventually you're going to be miserable because you're not comfortable in it. You have to be yourself. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to feel like you can laugh or cry get excited, get angry, you know, whatever the range of emotions are, you have to feel that you can do all of those things comfortably uh, with that person around you. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome point. The next one is you're having visceral or physical reactions around them. Um, I don't agree with, you know, somebody saying you made me do this, you know, because sometimes you hear abusers say that you made me do this. You made me get this angry. You made me hit you. You made me do whatever. But I will say that when you are in a toxic relationship, you know, your emotions will flare, you know, you will have a certain feelings around them. So even if you are an abuser and you say this, you're in a toxic relationship, you don't need to be in that relationship. It's probably more on you than them, but you are in a toxic relationship. But then those of us who are not abusing the person, but the person tends to start an argument and it puts us, um, you know, puts us off, you know, um, mm -hmm. it gets our pressure going up or they, they get you upset a lot. Um, mm. you know, they make you might want to hit them, <laughs> yeah. you Ooh. know, all of those kinds of things, things that it just you takes you. Cross, huh? That's right. <laughs> you know, uh, even, you know, even though you're, you know, not that type of a person, mm -hmm. um, you know, they just put you on edge sometimes for, that, for our guys who are laid back. Some women get with laid back guys and then taunt them the whole time to try yeah. to get them to be angry or get a rise out of them. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're feeling any of that, you may be in a toxic relationship. I think some of these steps that I'm going to go over, um, one step is enough to just say, you know what, I'm out. Okay. Mm -hmm, <laughs> so, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. some, but some steps you might be able to at least address it and see, you know, see the person's reaction about it. Um, if they're not willing to accept it and work through it, then, then I would say move on because all of these steps can go, they can escalate <clears throat> rather quickly and go very, very sour. And in some mm -hmm. cases can even jeopardize your life. Wow. Your partner shuts down your attempt to communicate your feelings. This one is very, very serious, whether it's happening to you as a male or what, whether it's happening to you as a female, 
if they're shutting you down when you're trying to, you know, communicate how you feel about things, how you see things, why you feel hurt, that's the essence of relationship. You know, it's not about, and we see this in our society today when someone says, you know, I've been abused or I've had racism or sexism uh, situations, you know, where I felt like, you know, this was being done to me, people will tend to shut them down, but that's not what you want to do because you're not going to have a healthy relationship with great communication if you don't acknowledge that the person felt a certain way. You cannot tell a person how they felt. Mm -hmm. okay? You can tell people about facts, all right? You know, the, the sun still, you know, sun is still hot, all right? The sun still shines. Those are facts, but you can't tell somebody that the sun, you know, made me made me feel too warm or too hot because everybody's mm -hmm. measure is different, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of respect people's feelings. And if you have someone that just won't let you get those sentences out and explain how you, you know, why you were angry or explain why you felt abandoned or not loved or whatever, unless you guys can fix that ASAP, you might as well want to end that because that's the crust of the whole relationship to mm -hmm. be able to communicate, to be able to say what, what you feel and why. Wow. That's good. Uh, the other step is you become protective of yourself. You should be feeling comfortable. You should be feeling where you can, that you can let your hair down. You should be feeling that you can tell your intimate secrets and intimate problems you shouldn't be on the other scale feeling like you got to protect yourself. You know, you feel like you're walking on eggs. You got to protect your physical body. You got to protect your emotional self. You got to protect your finances. You got to protect, um, you know, your mental, your mentality. You shouldn't be on the defensive. You shouldn't be, you know, this person should be your ally, mm -hmm. not your, not your, um, your enemy. And so, uh, you know, as simple as this is, sometimes when people get in relationships and they're looking at how good looking the person is, or maybe it's not even that, maybe it's, you know, somebody really loves me. That comes out of a low self-esteem thought process. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when we feel like we can't get anybody else, I'm overweight, I'm disabled, I'm, I'm not smart, I'm... You know, I had a child with someone else. I heard a young lady, she's had, she having a very decent relationship for, as far as I can see. I didn't say all good and all that because I don't know all of that, but it seemed like it's mm -hmm. a fairly decent relationship. But one of the things she said when she did a post for their anniversary, uh, he married me when I was rags. And I was like, uh, excuse me. Wow. <laughs> Wow. I said, wait a minute. And I know that, you know, she, when he married her, she had a child, okay, already. And sometimes women feel like that. If a guy marries me and I got a child, oh, they did me a favor. And, you know, and you're off to, you know, on the footing, you know, the, the foundation that you have is, is unstable. You don't want to feel like that. So you have to um, feel comfortable with this person, not that you got to protect yourself and not that, you got to protect your emotions and protect your reputation and all this stuff. You ought to feel so comfortable with this person. Mm -hmm. Your partner constantly plays the victim. Mm. Ooh, sometimes it's sometimes this leans on women more than men, but I mean men do it too. Um, something's always wrong. You know, mm -hmm. something's always going on. Now, sometimes men will do it as far as ailments and sicknesses or uh, some, maybe sometimes it's a plea for not working or why you're living the life the way that you're living it, you know, but sometimes a woman does it because she thinks maybe that's attractive to be, you know, the damsel in distress. But I mean, that wears thin. It wears very thin. You can't always be playing the victim. It's what, what's wrong with you today? Okay. <laughs> right, right. I want to deal with that. As, as they say, as the lady said so eloquently, nobody got time for that. <laughs> okay. So you got to grow up. You know, you don't want to be dealing with somebody who's constantly, I mean, they're always, they're the victim. If, if something goes down at work and now they lost their job, they're the victim. You know, it's always them. I remember this guy, he could never keep a job because he would, he's, First of all, he was abusive to his wife 
And then he always had anger issues at the job. And it's not, you're not the victim. If it keeps happening, it's something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. If you keep going through the same cycle over and over again, it's something wrong with you. And listen, I say the same thing to myself. I don't say anything different. If I'm constantly in a certain situation, I say, wait a minute, Tony, that ain't them, that's you. It's something you're not listening to. And we all have to be good at examining ourselves. Mm -hmm. We got to be really good at that. And so if you're constantly getting in a situation and you want to play the victim and it's the same situation, you may not be the victim. Mm -hmm. It may be the decisions that you're making. Mm -hmm. Another uh, way you know you're in a toxic relationship is you become isolated from your support system. Ay, ay, ay. One of the ways abusers or people who are going to keep you in a toxic relationship are successful is they get rid of your support system. That's one of the first things they do. Your mother, your father, your uh, girlfriend who's got your back, your, you know, your, your boy who's always there for you. The people who are going to say, uh-uh, something wrong with that. <laughs> uh-huh. They get rid of them. Those are the first people they get rid of. And if they can't get rid of them, they'll pick you up and move. Okay. Yeah. To make sure that those people are not going to be around. All right. If, if you're calling through the phone, they're going to shut down the phone. You know, if you do go out with your girl, they're going to call you 24 seven. They're just going to make sure they get you away from your support system because all of us need a support system. I don't care how confident you are. You need someone to pour into your life. Mm-hmm. You need someone to, you know, touch and agree with. Okay. You need that. So if you're in a toxic relationship, check and see whether your support system has been removed. And mm. you're most likely in one. It's a big, big sign that you are. I Another agree. one, mm. you're not in the same place in life as your partner. Now, mm. there may be two reasons. One, you may be lazy as heck, okay? Mm. We won't, don't want to rule that out. All right. Because Mm -hmm. sometimes people are in toxic relationships and they, they project onto you what they are. So they want to say, you're nobody and you're nothing. And you're the one doing all the work. I've seen relationships like that where the woman is doing all the work. She going out, she working, she coming back, she cooking and cleaning. He don't even have a job. And he's telling Mm -hmm. her she's nobody. She's nothing. Okay. That's a different type. But in this situation, is when they can do everything in their lives, but they have their foot on your neck and stop you from doing what you want to do in your life. You want to go back to school, they figure out ways for you not to go to school. They figure out a way for you not to hold a job. They figure out a way for you not to uh, to, to speak or to uh, you know start that little cookie business or whatever. Whatever you're trying to do, they find ways to stop you. And they'll, they'll elevate, but they keep you down Okay, because they have to keep you thinking low of yourself. That's a toxic mm-hmm. relationship. If people choose in a relationship to do two different things, that that's fine. When I met my husband, he was a laborer. He worked in the labor industry. He made good money, but he worked in the labor industry. And I had my first master's degree at that time. That was a different situation. But but after being exposed to me, of course, he now has um his higher education degrees. He's got several degrees. You know, because I I looked at his mindset, his vision, all of that. And anyone who loves the other person, you're going to help them. Now, we all don't help our partners in the same way. For me, it's education. I can definitely get you educated. I can support you in education. I can definitely help you start businesses, all of that kind of stuff. I'm going to be very, very supportive in that way. But for somebody else, it may be something else. They may just take care of the children while you go to school or whatever. But You should not be in a relationship with that person unless um, both of you are going to be better for it. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to be better for it, I don't even know why you're connecting. Love is number one. That's good. Want to have children together. That's great. But after that, y'all should be be better in each other. Not necessarily a formalized school. I'm not even saying that. You know, but whatever the dream and vision is, when a person loves you, they're going to get behind you and support you in that. Yeah. My husband, when he, when I first met him, he was an actor and he was a laborer. So he, you know, he acted, I showed him how to go to New York and act. And it was the irony was, is that I owned a theater company and I'm and met and married an actor. Okay. Mm, the wow. irony, the, the, how God puts people together and women tend to be multitaskers, have multi 
gifts and everything like that. And, you know, men usually have us, uh, not that they have uh, not more than one gift, but they usually have one strong mission or drive. And it's amazing how God will partner you and you can, you can soar together. Mm-hmm. Now he's, you know, he became a playwright too. I'm published it. I have a publishing business, published this play, staged this place for him, all of those types of things. So you, you can't be in the same place. You should be growing. It may not be on the same level as far as, um, you know, both of y'all are doctors. Okay. You choose what you, what you feel the Lord is telling you to do. That's fine, but you should not be in the same place. Okay. You should, you both should be elevating. Mm-hmm. in some way or shape or form you sh- not one person should be elevating and you the other one is like trash okay they're not getting anything out of life um the other one is you feel relieved when they leave that's a big sign guys. wow <laughs> that is a huge sign okay that's bad <laughs> you are getting relief okay you know he's he's been pounding on me hitting me he's playing russian roulette with the gun and and when he leaves, I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I can breathe. Mm. Or he's so, yeah, he's like bullying me around. Or maybe he's overly sexual or her so much overly sexual that it's just, you know, it's just so uncomfortable. Like it just, it's like, it just, you just can't take it. It's like when he goes, I'm like, thank you. <laughs> Uh, it could be so many reasons but if you feel like that if you're watching this and you feel like that you feel relieved when they leave that is a huge sign that you are in a toxic relationship mm-hmm. here's a big one that i think people overlook they overlook it but i see it it's very common i see it all the time everything is a competition mm, yes And I think I shared with this group about a gentleman that I dated. Um, It was after high school. I think I'm I'm thinking it was, oh, I know when it was. I meant to say it was after college. This is when it was. It was after college, but I was in the midst of grad school. And he already had his MBA in finance. And I was working on my first master's degree, which was counseling psychology. And at the time that I was going, that was a time where it wasn't a lot of women in psychology. It's a lot in it now. At that time, it wasn't a lot, but I'm talking about on the graduate level. It was not a lot. Um, In my class, I'm going to tell you, it was all old white men in my class. My professor was a white guy, but he was younger, younger than the older guys. So that gives you a good idea of who was going in that field at the time. I said that to say, I didn't think anything of it, but I said that to say that the guy that I dated, he, he seemed like everything in, comp- in our conversation was about a competition. We, we were out, supposedly outwitting one another. Right. And I was an unwilling participant. Like I was like, why? The first date you think, okay, that just happened, right? Second time you're like, what in the world? Then the third time it's like, are you really like, everything is a competition if I say something then you got to outwit me and all that so that's how we ended the relationship so you know I really enjoy our company per se like when we do other things but I don't get in a relationship to um to be in a competition Mm -hmm. I get in a competition to be in a competition well later on he did thank me when he got married and has own kids he uh, came up on my husband and I one day when we were out, out and about and I was pregnant with our first child. And he told me, he said, thank you for that feedback. He said, because he would have never had the successful relationship he has with his wife if I had not told him. I see couples all the time. When you see these high powered couples, sometimes that's the situation too that's going on. Yes. I became a doctor, so now I gotta be a doctor. Or I gotta get a doctor degree in something else. You a lawyer, so now I got to be an engineer, you know. And you making a hundred thousand, now I gotta make a hundred and fifty. And it just goes on and on and on. And I don't know why you would marry somebody to be in competition with them. Right, right. You know, join join the athletic club and compete in that way. Compete at a bake-off or something, but not with your partner. You should be working in collaboration. You should be working together 
you're building together. You're building your family. You're building your children. You're building together. You don't have to compete. They are not your foe. They are your friend. Mm -hmm. Also, you often think if only they were like this. Okay, mm. for the women who like to change men, I'm going to get him and then I'm going to change him. I'm going to build a man. Well, you can get a Ken doll for that, okay? Mm. You can build man by drawing a picture and building him to be what you want. But people are individuals and you must like them the way you see them. Just like when you go to the store, when you buy a dress or a shirt or a pair of pants, you don't get that and say, I wish it was something else. No, you buy it the way it is. Mm -hmm. If you like it, then you buy it, okay? Not unless you're in some kind of craft thing that you're doing. And even then, that's it's, an under, it's understood. But people don't like for you to be looking at them and saying, if only they were like this. Women do it when they go to church. If, if my husband could only be like the pastor, Ooh. you don't even know what the pastor really is like at home. That's right. Okay, he's a man just like anybody else. She's a woman just like anybody else other than having that extra dose of the Holy Ghost. We don't disrespect that, of course, but they are human beings and you may not like being with them. If you was only like Dr. So-and-so, well, you know, Dr. So-and-so misses a whole lot of dinners. Mm. You sit home alone a lot married to Dr. So-and-so because they get calls they got to run back to the hospital. They got to deliver babies, whatever they're doing. Okay, so you can't try to compare them to somebody else. That's a big sign. It's a toxic relationship. It's not beating on somebody, but it's still abusive. It's still toxic. It's going to cause trouble because you're trying to make them like somebody else. Let them be who they are. I like this picture here because he's got his little ring through the nose and his tattoos on the neck. And if you don't like that, then don't get with it. Mm. Sorry about that. I thought my phone was turned down. I have to get back to it. Um, you gave far, you give far more than you receive. Now we, we know relationships ought to be give and take. And we also know that they're not going to always be 50, 50. I don't know why people say that all the time. And some people say it's not 50, 50 is a hundred and hundred. That sounds cute too, but that's not true either. You want to have the mindset of giving 100%. But the truth be told, sometimes you're going to give 20 and then he's going to give 80 or he's going to give 70 and you're going to give 30 or you're going to give 50 and he's going to give 50 because you don't know what's, what's going to happen in life. So for instance, if you become incapacitated, you may be given 100% love, but you may only be able to give 30% income. You know what I'm saying? So if you go in just measuring how much a person gives um, by what you give you're going to be you're going to be sick sick about it because I know a lot of people like to split it 50 50 no matter what you get 50 and I get 50 everything all down the line it does just life doesn't work that way but if you are giving far more than you receive you ought to get something sometime I remember this lady I, was, I don't know if it was on Oprah or what because this is going back now this memory but she was on somebody's show. It could have been Dr. Phil's show. I don't even know. But she was on somebody's show because she constantly gives. And she had not gotten that one gift or present from her husband ever. Mm. Ever. Okay. Mm. And so that, that gets to be much. You got to, after a while, it's like going to the bank. It's like going to the bank and you keep taking these withdrawals out. Mm -hmm. eventually it's going to be zero when you go to the bank right. or it may even be a negative balance it's just common sense so same thing with the bank of love you can't keep making a withdrawal and you haven't made any deposits so you have to deposit and you have to withdraw it has to be a give and a take and it's not a measurement where you get 50 and I get 50 and I'm going to measure it all the way down the line it just doesn't work that way you give love freely okay without really asking for anything in return, but common sense says that if over time you have not received anything, you will go bankrupt. Hey, thanks a lot for watching my video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm gonna to try to upload videos as much as possible. So make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Take care. Are you subscribed to the Wise Courtship Philosophy?
then you need to get your Wise Courtship gear at the Wise Courtship store. Go to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship store. All the letters are lowercase. They make amazing gifts from children, adults, men and women, jewelry, hats, cell phone cases, t-shirts, and more. Represent Wise Courtship by going to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship Store.